Thank you, Dave. A suspicious voicemail from an elected official in Essex County. Was he trying to win a public contract by tampering with the process? Well, Kane is here with a Kane in Your Corner investigation you'll see only on 12. If you've watched my investigations, you may have already heard of Belleville Town Councilman Joe Longo. He's back. This time you'll hear a voicemail Longo left for another town official about a contract he was hoping to win. Longo doesn't think there's anything wrong with that message, but others say the call may have violated the law. Next message. Hey Kevin, it's Joe Longo calling. What you're listening to might be illegal. It's a voicemail to Belleville Town Manager Kevin Esposito from this man, Joe Longo, now a Belleville Councilman, then a member of the Board of Ed. We put in our number for the uh, recycling calendar for the town. Longo worked for this printing company, and he's asking about a $16,000 quote he submitted for a printing contract. Two other companies are up for the job, so what Longo says next is cause for concern. I'm just wondering if it uh, was anywhere in the ballpark, uh, or if you can give me an idea of where, uh, where it would need to be. It sounds to me like bid rigging. Jeff Mattingly is a local business owner who's been critical of Longo. Asking where I need to be is a direct conflict with an open bid process in asking the town manager who opens those bids. It, it, it just simply dumbfounds me. I wanted to talk to Longo, but he did not return repeated phone calls. But at a recent town meeting, Longo insisted the voicemail was no big deal. <laughs> What's the point? You're asking if your bid is in the ballpark, and if it isn't, where should it be? That's not asking for an inside rail on a contract? I think it's for an inside rail on a contract. <coughs> is this a trial? Okay, thank you. But the town manager believed Longo was asking for special treatment. Memos obtained by Kane in Your Corner show Esposito even contacted police to request a criminal investigation. No criminal charges were ever filed. Sources tell me at one point the cops asked Esposito to wear a wire, but the town manager said no. I'm just wondering if it uh, was anywhere in the ballpark, uh, or if you can give me an idea of where, uh, where it would need to be. One of the state's leading experts on government ethics also has serious concerns about Longo's voicemail. And since he was an elected official, she says it could be a violation of the state's government ethics law. I think that this is just a, a, a very good example of what not to do <laughs> because I think it's against the law and also it's against ethics. This isn't the first time we've investigated Joe Longo. Just last month, I told you how his printing company sold 10,000 flash drives to the school district while he was on the Board of Ed. At the time, the district's computers were so outdated, the flash drives could not even be used. Longo wouldn't talk to me about that story either. Excuse me, you're not allowed back here. So, bottom line, was Longo's voicemail legal or not? The prosecutor's office declined to press charges, but the ethics law is enforced by a different agency, the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs. It can impose fines for ethics violations. The DCA will not confirm whether it's conducting an investigation or even if an ethics complaint was filed. Do you know something I need to investigate? Call me at 732-738-KANE or email caneinyourcorner at news12.com or find me on Facebook at Kane in Your Corner. I'm Walt Kane, News 12, New Jersey.